Chapter 501, Class SSS Currently, Kitamura Kijitori took a place of high importance in Lu Xu's heart. The last time when two words meant so much to him was the another bottle, written on the cap when Lu Xiaoyu was craving lemon iced tea a long time ago. Those were the golden days. That time Lu Xu got lucky and won seven bottles for free in one shot. Thus, Lu Xiaoyu forced down seven bottles of lemon iced tea. As a result, she could not bear the mention of lemon iced tea now. Without a new source of distress points, Lu Xu could only resort to singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star for cultivation training. At present, the power gained through eight hours of singing was equivalent to that of 24 celestial fruits. In other words, he could earn 3,000 distress points per hour, which was a far cry from earning distress points actively himself, for he was really talented in that area. During the day, Lu Xu locked himself up in the room and buried himself in the new information sent by the Heavenly Network. Lu Xu learned from his failure to act as Kirihara Yusuk and decided to put some serious effort into his next mission. He aimed for something bigger. Thus, not only did he need to familiarize himself with the person's background, he also had to mimic his way of walking, the stock of the store, and even the relevant procedures of storage and redistribution. At the very least, it certainly would not make sense if he, as the store manager, had no knowledge about his work. When the collection of gods came to transfer goods, he could not possibly reply, please help yourselves. Take and store whatever you want. That was pure nonsense. Only then did Lu Xu finally understand that being a spy was not an easy job. People like Taniguchi Bundai had to spend decades on secret missions, constantly worrying about their personal safety. Not everybody could withstand prolonged mental stress like that. Lu Xu decided to return to his own self more slowly this time. People would progress over time, after all. And no one else but him could cause the failure of his mission, if he did not want to. At noon, Chiba prepared lunch for Lu Xu. The atmosphere was rather awkward, as Chiba struggled to interact with him so closely and Lu Xu still found it difficult to explain the situation to her. Nevertheless, he thought it was essential to keep Chiba informed to a certain extent. Should he reveal everything? Lu Xu mulled over the thought. His confession to Yeko had been the only choice then. Besides, it would not harm either of them to let her know the truth. But it was a different case for Chiba. What if she decided to give him away after she learned that he was not the real Kirihara Yusuk? On the other hand, Oda Takuma's death had been confirmed by the Heavenly Network after he was attacked by both Kitamura and Takashima. The conservatives had officially arrived at the end of their road. All of the members were captured by the Jingoists. And Lu Xu's part in it was to flip the military trucks in which the captives were being transported in, or at least burst their tires. Kiriharikin, what class of practitioner are you? Chiba asked curiously. Lu Xu froze. Should he tell the truth? Forget it, a joke would do. Then, he replied, well, I'm a class SSS. This time it was Chiba's turn to be stunned. She asked, class SSS? Does it even exist? Of course. Here I am. Lu Xu smiled. What does class SSS represent? Chiba knew that it was not a serious answer, but her curiosity would not allow her to back down. As a rookie practitioner who had not yet learned the foundations of cultivation, Chiba was filled with curiosity. Lu Xu pondered about the question. Right, he always saw class S, SS and SSS in novels, but what did they actually mean? After a brief pause, he said, I guess it means 666. From Chiba Mahiro's distress, plus 666. But at this moment Chiba seemed stunned. She said, Kiri Harikin, I once came across a post saying Chinese people like to use 666 to express their admiration for another person, so you. Lu Xu's brain throbbed. How could he expose himself this way? Was it due to Nye Ting's curse? Before he could think of a reasonable excuse, Chiba smiled and asked, So you like China a lot, don't you, Kiri Harikin? Yes. 
Absolutely. Lu Xu let out a sigh of relief. But things were not that simple. When Chiba was eating, tears suddenly rolled down from her cheeks. She said in a crying voice, Kiri Harakin, no matter how hard I try to convince myself, I know, from the day you returned after your sick leave, that you may no longer be the Kiri Harakin I knew last time. Lu Xu went silent. There were no idiots in the world. Even if he could fool everyone else, how could he deceive Chiba Mahiro, the girl who had paid so much attention to Yusuke all along? The Kiri Harakin I knew, Chiba was almost whispering now, he did not even dare to step on an ant. After someone pushed him, he would no longer have the courage to attend PE lessons. It is impossible for him to have become so different, even with a drastic change in his temperament. Hence, you are not Kiri Harakin, right? I'm not blaming you, though. I simply want to know the truth. Lu Xu sighed heavily and said, You are right. I am not Kirihara Yusuk. Yusuk committed suicide half a month ago. Just when he finished the sentence, tears welled up from Chiba's eyes uncontrollably. But immediately, her tears evaporated on her chin by the high heat emitting from her skin. To Lu Xu's astonishment, she had experienced an awakening yet again. You, bewilderment was written all over Lu Xu's face. Chiba raised her head with a smile, tears still rolling out of her eyes. She spoke softly, maybe he has finally found peace. Lu Xu had no reply. During the whole time of Chiba's honest confession, she produced no distress points towards him, nor any signs of hostility. He understood her feelings. This girl had been by Yusuke's side for more than two years, but she had never put her emotions into words. And now, those words could never be delivered to the right person. It was like a letter, with only the names, but no address. As a result, it could never reach its destination, nor be returned. Slowly but surely, it undulated in the long river of time, either forgotten, or buried, serving as a source of eternal pain. At this moment, Lu Xu heard the sound of windows opening on the second floor. It was from the room in which Yeko was resting. Shocked, he ran up at once, only to see an empty bed and the window wide open. Yeko was nowhere to be found. On the bedside table was a note that read a thank you, Lu Shukuin. See you again. Signed off by Sakurai Yeko. Lu Shu took a long while to recover from his consternation. Seriously? She had left? Sis, are you feeling better? I reckon it's not a good idea to run around amidst swarms of collection of God's people. Chapter 502 The Divergence Type Power Awakening But he was not that worried, because he believed that Yako's decision had been based on sufficient certainty and consideration of the situation. As for where she was heading to, it was none of his concern. We all will meet many passers-by in the long journey called life, and eventually we have to get used to goodbyes. Lu Xu turned and smiled at Chiba, who was standing by the door. He said, since Yeko has recovered, it's time for me to leave as well. Kirihara-kun, could you please hug me? Chiba pleaded softly, as Kirihara Yusuk, hug me, just once. Before Lu Xu could react, Chiba threw herself into Lu Xu's arms and left at once. She said, please take care. Thank you. Lu Xu was well aware that the feelings infused into the hug were not directed at him, but the face he was wearing. And it was an unfulfilled wish of the girls. Despite her serious injuries, Yeko had the confidence to avoid the small fries downstairs. Besides, she was not a person who would place herself at the mercy of others. Yeko knew she would have even slain Kitamura Hirono if not for Kijitori's sudden appearance. Moreover, one could tell from her weapon, the dagger, that she specialized in the actual collection of God's assassination skills instead of conventional swordplay. She was an assassin. In fact, if it had been Hirono, not Lu Xu, when Yeko launched the attack in front of his house, Hirono might have already been dead then. However, Lu Xu was much stronger than her. Yeko took a bold move to return to her apartment in secret which was probably unexpected even to the collection of gods. 
two collection of God's members were smoking in front of her door. But in a split second, they collapsed into a pool of blood, their hearts punctured by a dagger. Yeko was as quick as a specter. She peeled off the seal on her door and walked inside. Her house was a mess, most likely due to a house search. But she did not care. She had not returned for daily necessities, but for something she could not afford to let go. From the sealing chamber she retrieved 100,000 yen, her first income so far. After her teacher's death, all remaining funds of the conservatives were naturally passed to her. But she could not receive that money with peace in mind. Yeko carefully hid the notes in her pocket and was about to leave. All the important items were kept at her teacher's place. Certainly, though, she would not let go of the resources of the conservatives due to emotional reasons. To her, nothing that was of value should be wasted. That night, she would head to Osaka on a train and leave the country from there. She wanted to take a look at the outside world, though her destination was uncertain yet. She had considered the option of staying with Lu Xu, but a problem kept bothering her, she had approached him as a spy. Thus, it was destined that their interactions would remain improper. A wrongful start would certainly lead to a wrongful ending. Thus, she would rather leave and wait for an opportunity to start all over again. Farewell, Lu Xu Kuen. In the meantime, Lu Xu was sitting in the guard house of a warehouse. It was located in a remote place in the Nishinokyo countryside and its only visitors were the logistics personnel, transporting materials for the collection of God's research department. The original Yamada Akira should be ready to leave the country by now. Following the instructions given, Lu Xu hid in a male restroom nearby and waited for Yamada's arrival for an official takeover. From Yamada's expressions Lu Xu could see his unconcealed joy. Perhaps he was eager to go home, unlike Bundai. After six years, the day had finally come when he could return to his home. He had committed no mistakes during his assignment, which translated to even more well-deserved resources awaiting him in the organization. Yamada went into the restroom, and Lu Xu walked out. No one noticed that the role of Yamada Akira was now being played by another person. Lu Xu's aim this time was the same to cause trouble under his current identity. After all, while acting alone, he could give the collection of gods some headaches when they sent people over for goods. He suddenly felt that his new mission seemed easier than the previous one. Credits to the Heavenly Network, of course. At this moment, he heard a knock on the window. Lu Xu looked up to see a short man with a large, round face smiling at him from across the window. Lu Xu froze. Who the heck is this? Yamada. <laughs> I'm here to keep you company. Why? Do you not remember me? We just met half a month ago. The man laughed. Lu Xu asked curiously, of course I do. But what are you doing here? You said to keep me company? He picked up some information from his words. They were acquaintances, but not very familiar. They had only met once half a month ago. Correct. Smiling, he pulled open the door and said, I got cleared too, and they sent me here to take care of the warehouse with you. Lu Xu felt the world around him collapse. According to the plan, wasn't he supposed to be acting alone? What was this man here for? And he did not even know his bloody name. Pretending to be friendly, Lu Xu patted his shoulders as a form of greeting. He wanted to know his name from the background entries of distress points. However, at the moment, numerous points were being generated by the collection of gods and Lu Xu could not be certain which one was his. It seemed that too much distress could bring along inconveniences too. More importantly, Man, who are you? Are you working for Nye Ting to find joy for me? It was hard for me not to think along those lines considering the time you came. Yamada, do you think we can be employed again? The round-faced man asked. I've only attended a funeral with Matsura Harekuro, and now, guess what, I'm here. The internal clearing recently has affected so many. Lu Xu shrugged his shoulders with reservation. 
He replied, but we've got no choice except for waiting for it to pass. Speaking of which, why did they send you here? I'm good doing it alone. <laughs> you are such a shoulder shrugger like always. The big, round face grinned. Shrugging shoulders was Akira's habit, although Lu Xu did not notice it during his conversation with him in the restroom. It seemed to be an enforced habit just to convenience the new assumer of his role. Just like main characters' certain traits in mangas, such as the six lines on Naruto's cheeks and the strand of standing hair on Conan's head. It served to reinforce the audience's impression on the characters, because their facial features might be slightly off sometimes due to inherent difficulties in replication in drawings. Thus, a specific, representative action of shrugging shoulders might help him with the transition into this new identity. You didn't answer my question. What are you here for? What happened? Lu Xu asked casually. But the man did not seem to be dismayed at being suspected. He said, Lucky you. You came here early. Meanwhile for me, I came thanks to someone else's help. It's said that next to this warehouse there is an underground base, which has been in construction for over a year and is about to be put in use soon. Since the warehouse is so close to it, we must be working at an important place. Besides, as a Class D, I believe they will call me back again if I behave properly. In any case, the Collection of Gods is experiencing a shortage of manpower after the death of three Class Cs. Lu Xu remained quiet, which had given the man a wrong signal. He assured Lu Xu and said, but do rest assured. I heard that you've just ascended to Class D, and that's no big deal at all. Your time will come sooner or later so long as you train hard here. Oh, congratulations, then, Lu Xu replied politely yet slightly awkwardly. And to the man, the awkwardness had once again been misinterpreted as Lu Xu's low self-esteem in front of his own wonderful achievements. As a result, he spent the entire day talking to him and Lu Xu responded with countless shoulder shrugs. But at the end of the day, he still had yet to figure out the round face's name. At night, they stayed in the same room. Lu Xu was hoping for some background information on the man, but the Heavenly Network did not send any. At around 2 a.m., the man went to the restroom. Lu Xu was delighted at the opportunity, since not many collection of God's people were still awake to fill his screen with distress points. Thus, it would be relatively easy to find his name now. Lu Xu got up and went to the restroom too. Then, the round face turned to Lu Xu and gave him an ugly grin. He asked, Yo, Yamada, what a coincidence. Grin your foot. You would have been dead right now if not for the sake of my new identity. They stood together in the restroom. After a while, the man had finally started peeing. Instantly Lu Xu used his water-type powers to split the man's stream of urine into two. Lu Xu was conscious not to cause too many splits because that would seem too strange. This time, he would certainly succeed in knowing his name. So long as he had no contact with the man's body, he had no way to know his water-type powers. But to Lu Xu's surprise, there were no distress points produced at all, not even a small amount like 100. That's weird. Could he control his generation of distress points? That must be a joke if it were true. No one, especially a small fry like him, could resist his collection of distress points. Upon second thoughts, he gave up. This time, though, he was shocked to see the stream automatically split into three the second he stopped using his powers. That caught Lu Xu off guard. Sensing Lu Xu's startled stare, the man smirked sheepishly. Um... Recently I played too hard with those high school girls who had just entered the collection of gods. Now, Lu Xu had the urge to beat him to death. Bloody hell. You must have been sent by Nye Ting to make me distressed. Chapter 503 An Indestructible Identity Middle-aged men were really the natural enemy of water-splitting powers. Lu Xu could not help but look at the round face with deep emotions. Lu Xu thought that his move would certainly allow him to reveal his real name. 
but he had absolutely never thought that perhaps splitting his stream of urine into two would make him so happy. It was usually split into three streams. Why, his kidneys today are in good condition. Interesting. Since the man would not accept such a simple tactic, Lu Xu had no choice but to change his plans. At least he did not have to think so much for now. Once Lu Xu got serious, there was no way his image and identity would be given away. His previous tactic was simply too mild. Lu Xu felt that he had not completely made use of his full potential. Didn't all movie characters who had alter egos all say? If his appearance is mysterious, it is not because he has not appeared before. It is because all those who have seen his true appearance have all died. This image was of such a show-off. But, Lu Xu felt that he now had the same image. From now on, he would get rid of whoever saw through him. The round face pulled up his pants and walked back. As he walked, he chuckled in glee. Yamada, I heard that you are good at fighting. Even a mid-tier class D could not defeat you. Come with me next time. Once I advance to a key class C member, you can have a share of the sophomore girls in the organization. They are very cooperative. Lu Xu laughed lightheartedly. I'll count on you for that. On the outside he was laughing, but on the inside he was scolding the round face. Since when did peak class D's arrogantly take an underlings wherever they went? Don't assume that just because my urine is split into two streams that my kidney is bad. My body is very good. I can go for several rounds in one night without any difficulties, the round face said, trying his best to salvage his image and his dignity as a man. Lu Xu laughed. What was he bragging about? He still had the guts to brag after what had happened earlier. The round face suddenly asked. Is there any grease in your warehouse? What if the reserve significantly drops? Would they find out? Don't hide the truth from me. Now the two of us are in charge of guarding this warehouse. You can't hide the truth from me. There's no grease here. They will always do a detailed comparison when they transport things in and out of here. It's not like you don't know how serious they are with this, Lu Xu said. Even if there was grease, would they entrust it to us, the marginalized? The round face gave it some thought and said. How unlucky. The two of them returned to their dorm and once again laid down. Lu Xu pondered how it would be possible for him to get the round face's real name. He could not simply call him the round face all the time. How could he not know his name from start to end? One day passed in a flash. In the long run, this would certainly cause problems. Under normal circumstances Lu Xu would usually sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to himself. But with the round face around, he could not do so. When they woke up the next morning, the round face wore his pants and went to the toilet without wearing his jacket. Lu Xu suddenly laughed out loud. Already? You can't hold it in, right? The round face was dumbfounded and once again laid down with a crash. There was no way a man could say no. From Nagaya Kawayoshi's distress, plus 69. The rivalry between men was very odd. The two of them simply lay there. Even as they knew it was time to eat lunch, neither of them even spoke about getting up, they even gave up guarding the warehouse. Kawayoshi's face started to turn purple and he looked at Lu Shu. He was providing Lu Shu with more and more distress points. On the other hand, Lu Shu was not in the least pressured. As he was still young, he was strong enough to hold in his bladder. He was eagerly looking forward to Kawayoshi giving him more distress points. To be honest, this method of earning distress points made Lu Shu feel that he had found a new way to defeat his opponent by surprise. He had an accurate grasp of human nature. Kawayoshi had more pride and dignity in this aspect, and Lu Xu was tackling the problem at its core. It was at this moment that someone suddenly shouted from outside the warehouse. Where did the people guarding the warehouse go? Is there no one? Kawayoshi quickly sat up and shouted. Yes, there is, I'm coming. 
there was finally a way out for him. This time, it was not that he could not hold his bladder, but because he had work to do. However, Kawayoshi still rushed to the toilet first. The moment he relieved himself, he felt that the world was so beautiful. Lu Xu put on his clothes and opened the doors to the warehouse. A truck had stopped in front of the warehouse. A man with a peaked cap looked at him and said, Yamada, aren't you usually quite fast? What happened to? He had not finished speaking when he suddenly felt a chill down his spine. He looked around him, but there was nothing to be found. On the other hand, the smiling Lu Xu was wondering whether the man had figured out his identity, and whether he had to get rid of the man as a result. Ahem, the man said. This is the new batch of resources. After signing, do register it in the computer. Don't store these materials deep in the warehouse, lest the base next door come and take them away in two days. Lu Xu happily signed. Two people emerged from the truck to transport 13 boxes into the warehouse. The boxes were made of aluminum and were sealed tightly. Kawayoshi finally put on his pants and came over. He actually recognized the delivery man and said, Uchida. Long time no see. The man in the peaked cap looked pleasantly surprised to see Kawayoshi. Lord Nagaya. Why are you here too? Someone took a photo of me and Matsura Harekuro from the conservatives attending a funeral together. Honestly, I don't even know who this Matsura Harekuro is, Kawayoshi blabbered on. Uchida laughed. You don't need to worry. Looking at your strength, you can immediately advance to class C, you will definitely be re-employed then. Ha! <laughs> ha! Of course, Kawayoshi laughed. He was not worried about his future at all. When Lu Xu talked to him the previous afternoon, Lu Xu had sensed that there was someone above Kawayoshi. His allocation to the warehouse was more of a rehabilitation period just for show. He was quite different from the Yamada Lu Xu had replaced. But Lu Xu had never thought that this Kawayoshi was actually a favored member of the Collection of Gods. In reality, every department head in the Collection of Gods were usually Class C key members. Under normal circumstances, once you had advanced to Class C, your treatment would be worlds apart from that of before. Thus, in this case, it would not only result in Class C's being favored, but also those who had the potential to advance to Class C, many would try winning them over in advance. The collection of gods was now lacking in heritage. This was not only a result of Nye Ting's massacre earlier, but also because they had suffered heavy losses in the Kochang remains. Many key positions were still vacant. Everyone was in an intense competition with one another. The one who first advances to Class C would have the chance to obtain a crucial department. This time, Kawayoshi's leader Takashima Tairatsu had assigned him here to conceal his abilities. This was in order for him to quickly advance to Class C and take on a new job with an important role. The collection of gods itself was very united, but there were politics everywhere. Takashima Tairatsu and Kitamura Kijitori had the same views on the surface, but on the inside they both had the intention of seizing power for themselves. Whoever had more people on their side had greater influence in the collection of gods. Whoever advanced to class A first would truly be the unparalleled boss in the collection of gods. Chapter 504, Lu Xu, the boy with the least observational skills in history. The collection of gods' current plight was very awkward. In the early days, they had a complete inheritance and many ancient resources, allowing them to rise rapidly. As a result, they grew complacent and made many enemies. In the past, they often fought the Heavenly Network head-on overseas. However, they had never expected that the Heavenly Network would suddenly produce two Class A's. This was simply too frightening. If one were to single out the collection of gods, they would be very powerful. But the whole world knew that if a large organization did not have a single Class A, the real stage would belong to only the four organizations with Class A's, the Golden Foundation, the Heavenly Network, the Department of Faith Theory, and the Phoenix Society. Strength determined one's position. 
It had been this way since the beginning of time. Lu Xu waited for the truck to leave before suddenly asking. Why has the base beside us suddenly started operations? Kawayoshi said impatiently. Isn't it because some strong attackers from the Heavenly Network killed so many people recently? They have to shift to a safer place to conduct some of their affairs. Kawayoshi then lowered his voice. For Lord Takashima to advance to Class A. Oh, it would be great if Lord Takashima were able to advance to Class A, Lu Xu nodded. It seemed like he agreed with Kawayoshi, but he did not think so in reality. The Heavenly Network had already planted spies in the Collection of Gods and would definitely know this before Lu Xu did. Perhaps the Collection of Gods was also clear that they could not conceal an experiment of such a massive scale, hence they had to move here lest the Heavenly Network came and destroyed their results. Kawayoshi suddenly laughed out loud. Earlier you were with Nojoa Takenobu, weren't you? But now that Nojoa is dead, following me is your best choice. Come join me. Kawayoshi headed towards the dorm as he finished speaking. You guard the outside. I'll be training. It was as if Kawayoshi had become the boss of the warehouse, leaving Lu Shu with the manual work while he focused on training. Behind Kawayoshi, Lu Shu was happy without any complaint. If what Kawayoshi said was true, that they could expect a day where Kawayoshi was re-employed, then the chance of Lu Shu doing things by himself was up to Kawayoshi as well. The distress points that the collection of gods provided him had dropped significantly today. Lu Shu had already earned 400,000 points of the 3.2 million points needed to illuminate the seventh star. Needless to say, the character's Chai Wan had been of great help to Lu Shu. Lu Shu was like a normal warehouse security guard, on guard while sitting outside the warehouse. Kawayoshi said that he would go train by himself, but within half an hour, a very young girl appeared outside the doors of the warehouse. The girl bowed to Lu Shu and said, Senpai, Nagaya Senpai let me come here to find him. Lu Shu was speechless. Couldn't he have a break after purposely being assigned as a warehouse security guard? That's why your urine splits into three streams. You can't blame anyone else if you suddenly die. Within 20 minutes, she came out of the dorm neatly dressed. She bowed to Lu Shu before leaving. Kawayoshi came out of the dorm, looking very pleased with himself. How was that? They come immediately when I call them. Lu Shu replied. Yes, Lord Nagaya is amazing. Ha! <laughs> ha! In the next two days, I will be examining a new batch of talented students. Perhaps we will run into some good ones, Kawayoshi laughed. You're in luck, coming into contact with me now. Lu Shu rolled his eyes, but he could not do anything. Concealing his identity also had its drawbacks. Lu Shu really wanted to return to his original identity and beat him to death. Lord Nagaya, when you are re-employed, can you bring me along with you? I really have no relations with the conservatives, said Lu Shu. Kawayoshi laughed. Did you really need to ask? No worries. With your strength, putting you as a warehouse manager is a waste of talent. Kawayoshi laughed and was suddenly curious. Hmm. Yamada, I haven't seen you shrug your shoulders today. As he finished speaking, Kawayoshi felt a chill down his spine. He did not know why either. Lu Shu shrugged his shoulders and said, Ha! Ha! I don't shrug my shoulders all the time either. Kawayoshi laughed. True. What do you usually eat? As Kawayoshi spoke, he carefully observed Lu Shu. Lu Shu laughed. Walk 500 meters from here. There is a snack bar on the left. I usually eat there. Kawayoshi laughed and asked, Hey, you were once Nojoa Hakushin's driver and assistant, right? What kind of person was he? He, Lu Shu shrugged his shoulders, was too sarcastic. Of course I only say this because he's not around anymore. Not like I'm afraid he'll hear me though. Did you know that his wife had an affair? Nojoa Hakushun had a fondness for locking his wife in a cage. He was so cruel. 
Kawayoshi suddenly burst into laughter. Are you serious? What an odd person. In actual fact this was a secret. Kawayoshi happened to know this, as he had once been assigned to investigate Kitamura Kijitori and Nojoa Takenobu under Takashima Tairatsu. Kawayoshi had been suspicious of Lu Xu's identity and wanted to probe further. He did not expect Lu Xu to expose such a secret and immediately dropped his suspicion. In fact, the Heavenly Network's intelligence was very solid. No wonder Nye Ting often knew the trends of overseas practitioners in advance. The resources that the Heavenly Network had provided Lu Xu with included many details that Yamada Akira should know, such as his daily habits, the surroundings of the warehouse, as well as some secrets of his former colleagues. Of course, not all intelligence agents were like this. Besides, the Lu Xu was here to replace Yamada Akira, thus the information this time was more thorough. Nagaya proudly declared, at first I was in the same department as Nojoa Hakushun. He was always stronger than me. Afterwards I made use of my strengths as a class D to become the acting head of a department. Do you know what this means? Lu Xu was momentarily shocked. He said, does that mean Nojoa Hakushun got promoted? Wasn't this what he meant? In the beginning Nojoa Hakushun was the head of department. If Nojoa did not get promoted, how could you become the head of department? From Nagaya Kawayoshi's distress, plus 666. According to the script, Lu Xu should have praised him for having the recognition of the bosses, as he was able to become the acting head of department as a class D, was he fine with not following the flow of events? What was wrong with him? Kawayoshi had never seen someone with as little observational skills as Lu Xu. He kept silent for a long time before finally explaining. It was supposed to be me who received rapid promotion, that's why Nojoa Hakushun was allocated to a higher position. To be honest, it was Lu Xu's first time seeing someone so shameless. This Kawayoshi really thought too highly of himself. It was also this day's interaction that left Lu Xu with two impressions of round face Nagaya Kawayoshi. One, that his kidney was in poor condition and two, that he thought too highly of himself. Chapter 505, For Trucks of Goods That night, Kawayoshi refused to drink a single glass of water before going to sleep, just in case Lu Xu would propose another round of urine-holding competition with him. Their afternoon conversation had left Kawayoshi feeling uncomfortable for a long time. Speaking of which, he had never heard that this Yamada Akira was this annoying. Secretly, he messaged his friend to inquire about Yamada. After two hours, his friend had finally replied after asking those who used to be familiar with Yamada. Indeed, Yamada's honesty had offended many, but it had also earned him Nojoa Hakushun's favor and recognition. In fact, it was common that leaders preferred honest subordinates for they would not have to worry about betrayals and unnecessary dramas. And one had to admit that Nye Ting had made the right choice of posing Yamada's role to Lu Xu. Frankness tended to be associated with irritating behaviors. Kawayoshi dropped his suspicion upon seeing the message. He believed that sooner or later he would be re-employed officially as a head of department, without the word acting. By then, much trouble would have been saved with an honest person following him. That feeling could probably resonate with many leaders. And Kawayoshi thought that people who were too perfect were dangerous. Fortunately, Lu Xu was unaware of that. Otherwise, he would do his best to prove the difference between being irritating purposely and unintentionally due to straightforwardness. Then, many days had passed in peace, and both Kawayoshi and Lu Xu were waiting for the re-employment of the former. Every day Kawayoshi would call different girls to the warehouse and spend a range of time with them. One day, it was done in as short as a few minutes. Out of curiosity, Lu Xu asked him why he was so fast. That embarrassed Kawayoshi. From that day onwards, he would insist the girls talk to him for two hours before they were allowed to leave. When they ran out of topics, it felt so damned awkward. After two hours, Kawayoshi checked his watch and finally walked out with a look of smug satisfaction. 
Lu Shu looked up into the sky, wondering how many days Kawayoshi could keep the long, awkward conversations going. Aren't you tired? Doing that every day? Lu Shu asked curiously, after all you are no longer. But Kawayoshi interrupted him. I'm still young. Just over thirty. They say I look like a student. Lu Xu studied him carefully and suddenly found his excuse familiar because he had heard it in China too. Nonetheless, the reality was not that simple. Lu Xu pondered for two seconds before pointing out the truth. You look like a student not because you are young, but that you look like a country bumpkin. From Nagaya Kawayoshi's distress, plus 777. In fact, the comment focused more on one's fashion taste instead of their appearance. It was normal for many to start the pursuit of trendiness after graduation, and some sophomores, juniors, and even high school students had already begun to dress themselves up. But to the majority, students were the synonym of lacking in class. Ouch. Kawayoshi decided not to continue with the conversation. At this moment, they heard a loud roar of car engines, particularly jarring in the quiet, empty countryside. There were few residents in the region, except for a few factories. Judging from the number of cars, they must have come for the warehouse, Lu Xu thought. But he was uncertain of who they were. A rare look of seriousness appeared on Kawayoshi's face. He even smoothed his clothes upon hearing the noise. In less than five minutes, a car and four trucks stopped in front of the warehouse. As a young man alighted from the car, he shot Kawayoshi a brief glimpse, which immediately made the latter scuttle forward in an obsequious manner. Kawayoshi greeted him. What brought you here, Kuriyama-san? To transport four trucks of goods directly into the warehouse. I sent twenty men for you to order around. Teacher wants complete security of these goods. Understood? They won't be stored for long, and will be carried away upon the official opening of the base next week. As he spoke, he did not even look at Kawayoshi again. Then, he took out a cigarette, and Kawayoshi immediately lit it for him. Lu Xu's face lit up. That was Takashima Tairatsu's apprentice. Lu Xu could tell he was perhaps at the peak of Class C. But Kawayoshi proved to be not as impressive as he boasted. He was just a lucky man who had happened to follow the right person. During their conversation, twenty men got off from the seven trucks. They locked the doors again before reporting to Kuriyama. Upon seeing Lu Shu, Kuriyama asked, Who is he? He is Yamada Akira, mistaken to be a pro-conservative just like me. He used to be Nojoa Hakushun's driver and assistant, but now he follows me. It's all right. Kawayoshi replied with a grin. Then, he whispered to Kuriyama's ear rapidly, a mere class D beginner. No worries. I can kill him anytime if he causes any problems. Meanwhile, Lu Shu was awaiting further instructions beside them with an innocent look. The young man paid no more attention to Lu Shu, because a small fry like him was not worthy of his attention. Then, Kuriyama turned to Kawayoshi and said, no errors with the goods are tolerable. Take care of yourself at night. Rest assured that teacher did not abandon you and you will be assigned the head of department for security and defense at the new base later on. Thank you Kuriyama-san. Please extend my gratitude to Lord Takashima too. Kawayoshi was ecstatic. Unlike the security manager of some random hotels, that position had real power. At this moment, someone shouted in Japanese from one of the four trucks, Damn you, Takashima. You are even willing to sacrifice your own people. We used to be your supporters. Lu Xu was dumbstruck. He did not expect the so-called goods to be practitioners from the collection of gods. What's going on? Furthermore, judging from his words, he was likely to be a jingoist. Kuriyama's face darkened. Drive the trucks into the warehouse, hurry up. Nagaya, this is not your first time doing this. You know the consequences if anything happens. Please rest assured. 
I will not fail Lord Kuriyama's and Lord Takashima's trust, replied Kawayoshi, who made a deep, respectful bow. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens